and we could look at, um, let's say the next year and, and where we are. Um, I haven't done that. So uh, we could do that now if you like. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, my name's Barbara Jean Lindsay. Back in 1989, that's like over 30 years ago, I was a single mom with three kids, minding my own business. I had an art gallery and a design business, and I had a pretty good life. Um, no real complaints. And then I woke up one morning and there was this white misty cloud around me. And I thought, what is that? And I thought, well, if I just go back to bed, maybe it'll disappear, but it didn't. I woke up again and it was still there. So from there, then I went that night to a women's healing clinic. And as I'm walking into the church, uh, a woman comes up to me and hands me an inhaler. And she said that she had been told uh, in meditation that someone would need it. And she thought I was that person, which she was right, I did. So I took some of the inhaler and walked into the building. It was cold. Everyone was taking off their coats and hats. And as I'm walking in, I started having all this pain suddenly in my chest, like thousands and thousands of knives into my chest. And the pain was so excruciating that I couldn't handle it anymore. And I popped out of my body uh, for, at the church, the psychic church. They have a line of psychics that sit in a row and their job is to, to read the energy of what's happening in the room that night. So that night they saw me sit up in a chair, turn kind of a light green and full body channel this male being uh, with a, a very male voice, a very loud voice and a very authoritative voice saying that he's there to kill me. And when he said that and collapsed my lungs, there was another being that came in and this is way before the Marvel anything. This is 1989. Thor came in and and with his lightning bolt struck the Egyptian being dead and crushed him. And at that time they had taken me to the ER. Um, um, I was in um, a very serious condition. I was losing oxygen in the third dimension here in the hospital. Now my body, when I popped out of the body, um, I don't remember anything with the body at all. All I know is that I had absolutely no pain, absolutely no pain. And I was in this beautiful, amazing space. And it was this liquid, warm, undulating water of love, more love than I had ever felt in my whole entire life. I was a single mom. I had, I had the love of a mom, you know, or the love of a dad, of, of I'm a real loving, nurturing being. But this was way beyond anything I had ever felt in this circle of beautiful liquid love, kind of a dark water, there was more love than I had ever experienced. And I became one with that love. And in that love, it was intelligent. Uh, it was moving. It was creative. Uh, it was so beautiful. I just wanted to stay there forever in, in that love. And in that moment, I became one with everything. I became, my life expanded my whole mind expanded as I looked down and noticed that I didn't have a body, but yet I still existed. How can that be? How can that be possible? And in that instant of expansion, my next uh, experience is on a spaceship. And I was sitting in the middle of a spaceship um, and um, I was sitting in kind of a dentist-like chair that was raised back a little bit with my feet up a little bit. I'm thinking, what am I doing here? You know, this is like not, I, like I'm not in Sacramento anymore, but I thought it was kind of cool too. And so uh, the being came up to me on my left side. He was about eight feet tall, square shoulders, white robe, big white hood. I could never see his face. And he telepathed to me that he was the guardian and I'm to call him the guardian. And so I did. And he told me that his job was to be the intermediary between myself and some other beings that I would be meeting. So I said, okay, and he said, okay. And so uh, he moved his hand and off to the right, up to the back of the spaceship, a large glass window appeared. And behind the glass plate window, or not a mirror, but a window, um, were 
I don't know how many beings, seven to 10 beings, I didn't count them. Uh, there were some tall, some skinny, some fat. They all had a lot of personality, but they all had the same white robes on. And the same, the same, and I thought, God, did they get them on sale or special or something? I was making fun of it. So uh, it was definitely me having this experience, you know? And so um, they all talk amongst themselves telepathically. They all come to a conclusion and then they tell their communicator to tell my communicator what it is they want to show me and ask me. So the next moment, they taught me through experience while I was there. Um, a holograph of the earth came in and um, she was moving, she was moving around. I thought she was really beautiful. Uh, uh, and uh, as she came towards me, uh, her uh, heartbeat and my heartbeat came as one one heartbeat and later uh i had i met a, a first nation native chief and it's what so it sounded like a lot like the drum the drum beat of the first nations drums and uh her and i the earth became one and i got to see that she was feminine and that we needed to take care of her that we were disrespecting her and that uh in order to join a galactic federation or the other uh in the other galaxies and beyond we had to grow up and be responsible, um, not only for ourselves, but for our earth. And and that we were, uh, we needed to do that. We needed to do that as soon as possible. And so I just started crying because I felt so bad because I felt like, you know, that they were right, that I had not taken care of the earth, even though I was an organic, uh, organic gardener. I had no idea of what, how beauty, how much beauty she was and that she was considered a gem in our galaxy and that she's precious and and that uh, whatever uh, happens to her happens to us. And so we are one, one heartbeat. So they st I stayed with that for a while. Then I flew out of the spaceship and I flew uh, above uh, acres of green thick forest. I don't know for how long. I thought maybe they were... Um, Healing my heart, I had been going through a divorce at the time, of all this greenery, of all this nature. There were no people, no buildings, no anything. And I just did that for so long, um, uh, just to, I think, to heal me or have a connection. And and then after that, the the uh, guardian would look at me and uh, without saying anything, and I still couldn't see his face, but it's to go to the next uh the next experience. So that experience, I go up these huge stairs, alabaster lit stairs, really beautiful. And to the right is a temple floating in the cosmos with stars above it and around it. And it was a Greek, all of Greek columns in a circle. And as I went up there inside the circle of the Greek columns were a circle of the same beings with the robes, eight, eight feet tall, square shoulders, couldn't see their faces, but I could feel their hands. I reached in and held on to their circle and we became a synergetic field. And in the middle on a column was a uh, another hologram of the earth. And their job, they told me telepathically that they were the watchers and their job was to protect the earth and that they would never let anything uh, happen to her. And I felt that was very profound for me at the time. And they told me I could come back whenever I wanted. And I didn't want to leave. It was really amazingly wonderful. Vibration was very, very ultra high. And then the my guardian says, hey, it's time to go. So from that point, I go up and I'm at a, a, a party. It's like a Victorian spaceship. It's really weird. It's very, very tall, has black and white floor, and uh, there's jazz music playing in the back. There's hundreds of people. They're dressed in all sorts of different costumes. Um, and my guardian tells me um, that I'm to meet some certain people. Uh, as I'm s standing there now, this whole time, I can never see my body, but they could see me. I still don't understand that till this day. But the being said, oh, you have a really nice smile. And I said, oh, thank you. Like that, you know, I go, oh, so do you. And and so then this teddy bear, I only remember some of them. The first there was a Jeeves, kind of a waiter who gave us drinks to drink in, out of little vial tubes, different colors. 
uh, and they handed it to me, but I don't remember ever drinking it. Uh, and then the, the first one to come up was kind of a teddy bear looking four foot kind of Ewok looking guy that um, had a monocle and he was a professor or scholar and he had never, uh, he had only studied about humans, but he was very excited to meet a human because he had never met one before. And so we had a, so he shook my hands and, and then from there I went to the, um, um, down the hall and way down a vertical hallway, I saw a pink elephant in a tuxedo suit. And we had eye to eye contact. And and this is when usually people say, hey, can I have some of what you're having? Or, you know, and it's not, it's not like that at all. I was fully present in the moment. And um, I wanted to stay there too. And so they told me that they were um, there to uh, help keep peace among all the planets, that they were dignitaries that represented each of their, of their planets and that they did diplomatic work there together to keep everything uh, copacetic, basically. So I was really thrilled and honored to be a part of that. And so then from that moment, it, the guardian says, time to go. And so I spiral up and I'm the next experience is with a whole bunch of women that are uh, in these different colored uh, dresses. One's orange, turquoise, lapis blue, beautiful silk dresses and beautiful colored enamel jewelry and their hair is long and flowing and and they only talk to me in tone and so like sirens like mermaid sirens and so they're talking to me and they tell me that I have to find my tone or, or I can't leave and I go well uh but my tone's really low and theirs was high operatic it was so beautiful and mine was terrible and so finally I got out of my shyness and and practiced and they thought it was really funny and they laughed and then th I found my tone. It's a very deep guttural tone. And uh, and so then uh, my guardian comes and he says, it's time to go. And I said, no, I don't want to go. And he goes, no, it's time to go. And I go, no, I don't think I'm going. And he says, but you have three children. And I said, oh my gosh, I have to go back now. And so in that moment, the next thing I see is I'm floating up above the uh, room and I see my friend Cindy in a meditation. And I go, who sat in that hospital bed? And that was me in that hospital bed. And I didn't even recognize my body at first, but I didn't freak out or anything. I just, oh, that's me down there. And oh, I'm a little pudgy, but I'm not too bad, you know? And so that was my body. And, and I thought, well, if I go back down there, I'm gonna really need some help. So I went up and asked the guardian if I could uh, have some help if I'm gonna go down into that density. And he said that he gave me the, the gift of white light. And I said, well, um, uh, you're only going to give me white light. That's all you're going to give me. And I kind of threw like a little fit. And he says, well, yeah, you'll you, basically you'll understand it later. And so he gave me that as a gift to take me down back. And then I started to go back and he goes, hey, and so he pulls me back up again. And he said, we would like for you to be uh, we have a mission for you if you would like to take it. And I said, yeah, sure. What is it? because we would like for you to be an ambassador. And I go, oh, an ambassador. And so I'm going back and I see my body. And I look back and I never see him again. And um, as I'm going back to the body, I'm thinking, oh, is that a, am I an ambassador for the arts? Am I an ambassador for love? What am I an ambassador of and for? And, and I go back down into the body. I fill up my body totally with white light. So every speck of me is there. And then I sit up and I had been in a coma for two and a half days, almost three days. And I have all these tubes and I pull them out and I just say, I'm starving, I want some nachos. And my friend, Cindy jumps out of her chair and she goes, oh my God, did you know that you were, we all thought you were dying. And, and I had started talking like I had just gotten up from a nap instead of from being in a coma and, and um, not making it back. So when we transition, out of this body, uh, we are uh, embraced and celebrated and we're never alone. So that was number one. Uh, number two is my psychic abilities turned on a hundred percent. I can look at the future if you like, um, and we could look at, um, let's say the next year and, and where we are. Um, I haven't done that. So uh, we could do that now if you like. Mm. 
Um, I see a lot of change. Um, I see war. Hmm. I see a, a lot of change in the people, though, and that gives me hope uh, that they are going to, it's kind of like they've had enough of war and the people find their voices and they help um, uncreate the war. I don't know how it's done, but it's like the people gather. I see all the people in the street kind of saying no more, no more. And it's where um, there's some kind of an accident or trauma where a lot of innocent people are killed. And and during that, uh, the people say that's it. They've had enough, that there has to be another way to get out of this besides war. Um, and I see them working with um, uh, governments and changing government where the people are much, much like the old system goes out and a new system comes in and they do become organized uh to where they uh have ideas that can be created to run different um different um different countries have different ways of communicating where if if there's no war then how are we going to do this it hasn't been done before but now's the time. And we're gonna have some leaders that are that we've never had before, that are more in tuned with peace on the planet and um in our new um fifth dimension that we're going into that's a much higher vibration. And uh it asked for each of us to be much more responsible so that we uh, don't put it on someone else, but that everyone stands up and takes um, action. And that's between the one to three years. But mainly that first year, 2024, is going to be a very pivotal year. Uh, thank you so much for listening to my story today. Uh, I, uh, I hope that you're uh, happier or better or or just the way you are from from having uh, me uh, talk with you and come into your life today. I'm I'm really thankful, grateful for that, and honored uh, that you would want to listen to me um, too. Um, you can reach me at uh, uh, the Cosmic Oracle at gmail.com. That's a good one. And uh, I have my books that I uh, wrote about my uh, experiences. I, and I have my school, which I love, and I love teaching. Um, and I guess that's it.